So stability has some value, uh, but it doesn't mean that everybody's happy. In fact, it just means that uh, nobody can find anybody else who's equally unhappy that they would want to run off with. So let's examine the question of how well people do using the mating ritual or in other possible ways of finding stable marriages. So basically we want to begin with the question of who does better, the boys or the girls? Uh, maybe uh, it's a mixture. Maybe the boys do better, the girls do better, maybe some boys do better than others and some girls do better than others. And one thing to notice is we know that the girls' suitors are getting better day by day. And that sounds like, you know, the mating ritual might be slanted towards them. Likewise, the boys' sweethearts, the ones that they're serenading, are getting worse day by day. And that sounds like it might be an argument for the girls to do better. But that's not true. And the reason it's not is that if you think about it, the boys are starting off with their first choice. They begin by serenading the girl at the top of their list. And it's true that day by day they keep going down or staying the same or going down, but they're only sinking to, in fact, uh, the best possible woman that they could be married to. Um, let's examine that. So I need a definition, which is that we'll say that a woman, Nicole, is called optimal for Keith when she is the highest ranked girl he can stably marry. So let's think about that for a minute. So Keith uh, has his preference for different uh, girls that he likes to different degrees. Uh, and uh, there may be some that he likes, like Keith uh, thinks that Angelina is terrific, but there's just no way that, that she's gonna wind up with him because she just ranks him very lowly. So there's no stable set of marriages in which Keith can wind up with this very desirable woman, Angelina. But um, if you look at all of the sets of marriages that, uh, that are stable that Keith can be involved in, among them, Nicole is the woman that he most likes. So that's what we mean by Nicole is optimal for Keith. She's optimal among the feasible women that he could stably be married to. And the claim that we're making is that the mating ritual yields a set of stable marriages which is simultaneously optimal for Keith and all the other boys at once. Now that's a kind of unusual thing. You usually, when you're optimizing, you figure you're optimized for one uh, boy and it sacrifices the optimality for the other boys, but that's not what happens in the mating ritual. All of the boys get their absolutely optimal spouse in the mating ritual and dually, it turns out that all of the girls get the worst possible spouse that they can get, a pessimal spouse among all possible stable marriages. Okay, well, with that claim understood, let's go about proving it. And we're gonna prove that uh, the mating ritual leads to boy optimal marriages by contradiction. So let's suppose that Nicole is optimal for Keith um, among all the women that Keith could possibly be married to in a stable way, Nicole is the best. Suppose that Keith does not wind up marrying Nicole in, some st in the mating ritual. Okay, so he doesn't marry Nicole in the mating ritual. That means that he must have, since Nicole is, is optimal for Keith, uh, he must be married to somebody that's less desirable to him than Nicole. So he must have crossed Nicole off on some day. Let's call that his bad day. So on his bad day, Keith uh, is rejected by his optimal spouse. Okay. Among, uh, well, if this ever happens, there's going to be some a boy for which, who has the earliest bad day, we may as well assume that it's Keith. So let's assume that Keith uh, was the earliest among the boys to have a bad day. That is a day on which he crosses off his optimal spouse because he was rejected by her. Well, on this bad day, uh, when Keith crosses off Nicole, it's because Nicole rejected him, which meant that Nicole had a suitor that she liked better than Keith. Let's call that suitor Tom. So what we know is that Nicole prefers this guy Tom to Keith on the day that she, uh, that, she, that she rejected Keith and he crossed her off. And we also know since this is the earliest bad day that anybody has, um, uh, Tom has not yet crossed off his optimal girl. 
so what that means is that since he's serenading Nicole and she's going to wind up rejecting Keith in favor of Tom, it must be the case that uh, Nicole is at least as desirable to Tom as his optimal spouse because he hasn't gotten to his optimal spouse yet. He's working his way down the list um, and he hasn't had a bad day yet. So let's put these two pieces together. Nicole is at least as desirable to Tom as Tom's optimal spouse. And Nicole prefers Tom to Keith. Well, what that tells us is that if I had a set of stable marriages with Nicole married to Keith, then in the stable set of marriages, of course, Tom is going to be married to somebody that's at best optimal for him. So he's married to somebody that he likes uh, less than Nicole. And Nicole is married to Keith and she likes Tom better than who she's married to. What that tells us is that Nicole and Tom are a rogue couple in any stable set of marriages where Nicole is married to Keith. But that contradicts the fact that Nicole's supposed to be optimal for Keith. There's supposed to be a stable set of marriages where Nicole is married to Keith. So a similar argument, it's actually slightly easier, uh, is that uh, the mating ritual yields a set of stable marriages in which all of the girls get the worst possible spouse that they can have in any set of stable marriages. Okay, so this leads to a whole bunch of questions and it turns out that there's a very rich theory of uh, stable marriages, as I mentioned. Um, uh, first question to ask is, well, are there other possible stable marriages? Well, one thing that you can obviously do is you could switch the roles of the boys and the girls. So if you switch the roles in the boys and the girls, you'll get a, uh, a, a set of stable marriages that are optimal for the girls and pessimal for the boys. Maybe that's fair, fair or you'd rather do that. So that's at least a possibility of using the mating ritual to get two different uh, stable sets of marriages uh, unless the two happen to be the same. And the question arises, are there others that could exist that the mating ritual doesn't find either by choosing the boys to act as boys or the boys to act as girls. And the answer is that in general, there can be many. As a matter of fact, if there are N boys and girls, it's possible that there could be an exponential number of stable marriages in N. And that leads to the question of, well, which is one that might be a better one to choose compared to the one that completely favors the boys or completely favors the girls. Um, another interesting question that comes up um, that's a, a, an issue that comes up with general protocols of negotiation and optimization among multiple parties is, does it serve anybody to lie? That is, instead of following the protocol uh, and always going to the, uh, and the boys always serenading the girls that they like best and the uh, uh, girls always rejecting uh, anybody that's less desirable than their favorite suitor. Uh, suppose they violate the convention and lie, can they do better? Well, it turns out that, of course, the boys in the mating ritual are doing optimal, so they don't gain anything by trying to lie. But the girls, it turns out, uh, almost it's almost the case that girls can do better by lying if they, if they conspire together to lie. They can actually uh, force the mating ritual to wind up turning into a stable set of marriages that's girl optimal. So that raises another issue about are there protocols which are resistant to lying. Um, we're not going to go into these questions. We mainly wanted to understand the stable marriage problem which and its applications um, and how to find them. Uh, again, if you want to learn more about this, you can look at the book by Gusfield and Irving uh, that I mentioned in a previous video.